welcome to RBC Disruptors. This is our monthly conversation about innovation, technology, and how it's changing everything around us. I'm John Stackhouse. It's my pleasure to host these conversations. And it's a real thrill to have John Chen here as our special guest to kick off uh, the new year. John Thank needs you. no introduction. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about where he's uh, taking BlackBerry. But John, welcome to RBC and to Thank you. RBC Thank you, John. Disruptors. If you're joining us on Facebook, uh, Facebook Live, welcome to the conversation. Please fire away with your questions. We'll get them on the monitor here and try to insert them into our conversation. Same for our guests on WebEx uh, around the world watching through RBC WebEx. Welcome and share your questions and join the conversation. And a special shout out to our guests at York University who are watching and will share some uh, questions through, uh, through the conversation. We're going to talk about where BlackBerry is going, about the state of cybersecurity, about the Internet of Things and some amazing things going on there. AI and where you uh, want to see things go on that front and of course the great challenges that we're now seeing on, uh, on the China front between China and the US. So lots of great uh, and important subjects uh, to get here today. But before we get into that and especially into the BlackBerry story, John, I wonder if we can get a bit of background on you. Grew up in uh, Hong Kong. Tell us about the foundation there and what turned a kid on in Hong Kong, turned you on to technology. Well, um well, first of all, very nice to be here, and thank you for, for having me on. Um, I don't know how many people in the audience are from Asia countries. Um, okay, I see some hands, so good. Yeah, um, I, 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 a reason I say this is, I was gonna try to answer John's question earlier, what turned me on to be in technology? Uh, the real answer is I really didn't have a choice. Um, <laughs> When I was growing up in Hong Kong, this is obviously after World War II, and, and my, my parents were refugee away from the communists um, and trying to make themselves alive, like millions of people uh, at the time. <coughs> um, so we were all brought up to believe that if you study uh, math and science, you have a future. And if you don't study math and science, then you're useless. Um, and this is, of course, is absolutely wrong because I learned one of the big passion I, of mine in my middle age, uh, I'm, I'm an advanced age, so the middle age, which was a while back, is to start really appreciate the power of history. Uh, we could talk about that, if you, but, but anyway, the point being, uh, um, as you all know, especially the people who put up their hand, hence, um, you know, Asia was very focused on, on their next generation learning math and science. And, and so, so you, you might all think that Asians are mathematicians, uh, not, not because it was born that way, and if your friend, Asian friend tells you otherwise, they, they're just pulling your leg. But uh, it's because that we got drilled very early, I mean literally, sadly early. <laughs> and and this, is, this is it, I mean the, the society just makes sure that you you're either you know, a you know, math, science, engineers, med doctor, and medical doctor or anything. And this have obviously has a lot to do with the history of what happened in, during World War II, where the Asian country, especially in China, fell you know, very much behind in technology and that created a lot of pain for the nation. And, and we're still living through that right now. Right? So this, so the, the foundation really comes from um, working hard because you have to make something out for yourself, but you really got to study the right thing. And then today you're known as the turnaround guy, and we'll talk about a couple of your turnarounds, but uh, did you set out to be that? Does one prepare to be a turnaround guy? No, it's, it's more, probably more an attitude or no thing than... than um, uh, what's, what, what's the attitude? Well, you, uh, you know, I like to make things... I, a couple of things I like, I enjoy. I enjoy the challenge of doing something different. Uh, I'll get back to why that, that you know, uh, how that is related to the answer to your questions. And number two, I like to fix things. I, I always like to fix things. Although I'm not handy, you know, <laughs> at all. <laughs> um, I remember one year, um, we moved to, uh, 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 you know, we had a last move to the current house I was in. We have very, very high ceiling, um, and they're all recessed lights. So my wife asked me to change the light bulb, 
I look it up. I said, you can't change that light bulb. I, I'll die changing that light bulb. <laughs> uh, so I said, maybe you get somebody else to come do it. And she, she looked at me like in shock and saying like, are you kidding? You, I'm going to go hire a handyman to change your light bulb? <laughs> I, and, and so ever since those time, every time we have you know, family, friends, and stuff that we go to dinner, we, we, the, the topic of being handy, like, we got friends that you know, try to show me off by saying that they could build staircases right, in a house. This is ridiculous, right? But, <laughs> So you, you, you're, you're not... But anyway, I don't know why I got off that, <laughs> that topic. But the point is, I, I like to fix things. Um, I also like to do things most people think is not doable. Mm. Okay? I, I said it many, many times and in my prior life. Um, I had a Wall Street Journal interview, and then they said, why are you doing this to yourself? And I said, well, one, I couldn't find a better job. <laughs> two, and which I come back to that. Two... Um, is that I think you, you run the death bell too early. Mm. And, and, and you know, so I like to accept that challenge. So far, so far I've been lucky, um, not, not, not destroying value uh, versus uh, building value. Let me get back to the point about, I kept saying, referring, I couldn't get a job because you have, the one thing about you like to do things, um, you like to do things different, which I like, I like to mm. do things. I started as a hardware engineer, Designing chipsets, uh, that's what I learned from school. Um, and then I got into management, um, and, you know, and uh, I got in sales, I got into product marketing, and anyway, long story, of, I got into different things. Then I decided that I want to go to software. So then I ran a company called Sybase. Um, and if the company is doing extremely well, would they really go out and hire a hardware engineer to run a software company which is completely broken? I mean, you sit back and think a little about it. Is that what you're gonna do? It's like, if you have, you have a medical problem, were you really gonna go get a doctor that had never done it before, that is very eager to do it? <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know, I mean, I wouldn't, but. So, I'm serious, I, I'm, I'm not joking. I mean, like, so I look for opportunity like, you know what, I like to try that because through that process, I'll learn something. And, 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 and actually, I did get lucky. So I went from hardware to software, now to wireless, handset, mobile stuff. Um, had RIM been doing really well, and you know, there were never a launch of a iPhone, uh, you think I'll be sitting here talking to you at this? You know, this is a real great opportunity for me. But they, uh, they to came to you new. two or three times before you accepted. Why yeah, did you not yeah, want it, the challenge initially? So after doing it a couple, few times, then people were just kind of annoyed at you. This is the other thing you earlier talked to me about um, that, that you want to ask me about China. I hope you, ask, you want to ask me about China not because I'm Chinese. No, no. Let's speak. Right. Because a lot of times it's, <laughs> oh, this guy's a Chinese guy. Yeah. He, he knows China. Uh, no, there's a technology you know, more I, emerging I, I, between. So, uh, but so we could talk about yeah. that. You know, but anyway, point is, <laughs> point is, after you've done it a few times, yeah. people trying to kind of label you that way. And I'm, I'm really happy in what I do. I, I, I enjoy what I do. It's, it's, uh, it's hard. <laughs> Sometimes it's really, really tough. You have to have a right attitude about it. And you have to get up every day and say, I'm going to, I'm going to create more values. Um, and you're going to have some setback. And you just say, hey, if it's not broken, they don't need me. So what right, was so. the opportunity you saw in BlackBerry when they came to you? Well, we all grew up with BlackBerry. I remember, just like a lot of the story, um, that, that was kind of a badge of honor. You know, I remember when, when I was an engineer, um, starting out, running around the plants, really big plan. Uh, physically, you know. yeah. um, so we were building mainframes. So that you, it's not like everybody sitting in front of the a desk and have a PC. We're building mainframes. It's very hard to get on time. Anyway, so if you're somebody, your manager needs to get hold of, meaning that you're important. At least you feel like you're important. Uh, then you get a pager, rim pager. I don't know how many people remember the rim pager. 
right? And, and that's like a badge. I mean, that's like, you make sure you wear it outside of your lab coat, mm. you know, like this. Yeah. Like the gun, you know, like the police said that they like to show you the guns, you know. <laughs> because like this is, okay, like, you know what, you and I having a conversation, but I could be called anytime, mm. you see. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, and I'm not joking, I, I mean, you, I, we all felt that way. Yeah. Um, and then obviously gradually moved to management, you got used to it, and you then become a cell phone. And blah, blah. I, thought, I thought BlackBerry is, is very iconic, the way it changes how we work and how we live. Uh, how we communicate. I thought it was an extremely iconic company um, that is not only for Canada, but for the world. But for all the, you know, but if you look at the Apple game plan, the number one company that they're most afraid of, that Steve Jobs was most afraid of, was RIM. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's well, well documented. Uh, and they keep talking about, we got to take RIM down, we got to take RIM down. And they did. <laughs> but, uh, but the point is, <laughs> RIM actually took, took our cell down. That's a different issue. Um, that you have to, I won't talk about that because that you have to pay to buy my book, which I, <laughs> which I haven't started yet. Uh, uh, but, um, anyway. so I'm sorry for digression. Uh, I, 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 so I thought it was really iconic um, and it has tremendous amount of technology. And, and, and I really believe the world would be better off having a strong BlackBerry rather than, rather than not. So there, you, there we go. But you go in there in 2013 and it's uh, easy to forget how down it was at the time. What was the single most important thing you did in the first, let's say, year to begin the turnaround? Mm -hmm. um, every turnaround is pretty much the same. Um, when it get to the stage that I enter the scene, um, it, it's usually it's usually, um, it's one of those things that you, you, you start needing to, to, to book the priest. Uh, yeah. Um, so we, uh, we have a balance sheet, sheet crisis at the time. Um, and we literally ran out of cash and we owe a lot of money to a lot of the vendors, uh, our suppliers. We had to work all those deals out. I think the first set of things that we've done is to really, uh, uh, you know, kind of get the balance sheets in order, maybe as a way to turn. So that's a, that, there's multiple dimensions of that. You know, dimensions of obvious, you know, the obvious one is making sure that um, you save money, um, you know, save cash and, and, and get, get assets, get rid of the assets to, so that you could have a stronger balance sheet. And you have to resolve all your outstanding debt um, and obligations. Sometimes it's not that, it's just an ongoing obligations. Like, you, you might or might not know, to launch a cell phone with a reasonable success will cost, without exaggeration, a billion dollars in committed capital. And, and you say, well, a billion? Why is it a billion? Well, because you, know, you, you want to roll it out in 600 operators around the world, and, and cell phone has an 18-month li shelf life. So this is not like, let's do it one at a time type thing. Um, so, you know, we know the road out, you know, all variances and different band and different languages and different color and all that and have enough stock as for a swap, it, it will cost you a billion dollars uh, and there's no exaggeration. So you have to make those commitments too. So it's a, it's a big balance of the balancing act. Four years later, five, five years later, how far along are you? Well, um, we... I'll, I'll, I'll use this, I mean I, I'll, I mean, I could give you the song and dance about how great, how great we've done and how brilliant my leadership has been. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll skip that song okay. and dance. All right. I'll give you one data point. Um, f in 2013, when I entered the scene, we owned probably a couple of billion dollars to various vendors and so forth, and we actually don't have more than a billion and a half. So that's, that's that data point. Um, last year, we committed to write a $1.4 billion check to buy a AI company, artificial intelligence company. So there, yeah. there goes the- All cash. Yeah. All cash. Yeah, well done. So talk, to us, um, talk to us a bit about where BlackBerry is today. It, it, you're, you're presenting it to the world as a software company, but people still in their minds and in many hands still see it as a device company. How long 
How much longer is it going to be a device company? Well, we really uh, don't do any more device. Um, what we do is we license our operating systems um, for, especially in it, you know, it's famous for security and safety. We license our operating systems to people that would like to build a device. And in some cases, in China and uh, India and uh, in Indonesia, um, they will have their local supplier of phones with a BlackBerry label on, um, and we will then do a qualification QA on, on that. So, and, and we like to take that model into more internet of things rather than just the phones. I think the phones is one of those battles that's worth fighting, but it was a, you know, it was kind of a last year battle or a previous times battle. Why, why is it worth fighting if it was last year? Well, it's year. worth fighting because there's still going to be a lot of phones that made every, every year. Um, and there, I think the phone styles and model will bifurcate. Uh, it's not all, it, it, the world is not going to a thousand dollar phone uh, as, as, you know, Apple would have wanted it. You know, and the next phone would be $1,200 and be $1,500. I think they, they, they got the, inflation chart wrong mm. a little bit. Um, but anyway, so I, I, I believe so there are people- Apple got the inflation chart wrong. Do you think the price of phones is- I think the prices of phone, I down? think the price of the phone will come down. Um, it, 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 this is not even um, expert opinion. If you just sit back and think about one simple thing, uh, which is one element of the new phones and it is not just Apple, you know, it could include Blackberry, it could include Android and Samsung phones and all that. What real technology breakthrough are you looking at in the last two years? Better camera? Yep, better camera. <laughs> That's it, right? I mean, it really is. Um, so same software, same cloud-based interface, same everything. Um, so uh, when, when the innovation starting to slow down, that doesn't mean it can't come through. When the innovation is starting to slow down, the margin will come down. And the margin come down, and then there's a big enough market out there, the price will go down. I mean, that's just facts of life, just like the desktop PC you have today. Right. So if, if we're seeing this secular uh, trend in the har on the hardware side, why still call yourself BlackBerry? If you're why? Focusing? Why do you still call yourself BlackBerry if that's identified with hardware? Oh. Hardware is a good, the That's is. a good question. A lot of people ask me about that. You know, since we are now focusing on software, surfaces, security, so mm -hmm. forth, um, why still call it BlackBerry? First of all, I hope, you know, I hope most of you all are Canadian here. Um, um, I, I feel that there's enormous amount of equity in the brand. Um, I, you know, it's one of those brands that I like to make it better first before we even contemplate changing the names. This is a, this is a, um, a analogy that you find me uses all the time because I ask this question almost, you know, not every week, but every month probably, um, somewhere, including government people. Um, because if you, if you run into those uh, branding experts, um, they will ask you, they will tell me that you really ought to change your name because your story is a little different. Uh, I sat back and thought about it the following thing. So I assume you have one child that is not doing well in school and failing math. So I have a question for you. Do you then go to school the next morning and change his name? <laughs> Uh, let's not call him John. Let's call him David, because you know then 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 maybe maybe the English teacher or the math teacher forgotten that David David is not John, so David will do really well. Now I don't know how who come up with that 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 irrational strategy of any time. BlackBerry. When I told people about BlackBerry, first of all. Um, everybody say, oh, yes, I was the last one to give up your phone. I was, dying, I was, cr I was crying when that, they took it away, uh, and so forth and so forth. I still haven't met the last one yet because every day I met the, the last one. <laughs> so, and unfortunately, we still have about 3 million BlackBerry users 
phone user out there on our system, we could see it lit up. So I still have to meet three million more people being the last one. <laughs> there will be a last one. By the way, on, on the very last one, I decided to put a statue. <laughs> uh, here, here lies the last one. Um, but, not, but not yet. Not yet. You could have three million. It would take a while. Um, There's an, an amazing brand value there. It's exactly. You're, you're, and you're and so you never change name when you're not doing well. You focus on doing well. Right? And then when you do well, that's a different time, for, time zone. Now you're in a sense, you say, okay, I need to broaden what I represent. Okay, now, now you have earned the rights to change name. I never seen changing names. You guys, how many people remember a company called Silicon Graphics? Mm -hmm. Well, they, when they did, did, they did very well in the 70s, and you know the graphics stuff. And Ed McCracken was the CEO. They went, they ran into an issue with you know the workstations business and blah blah blah. And then and then they and then they hire a high power consultant. And one of the thing they would do is to change names. So how many people remember? Now, by the way, they still exist. So how many people do, do you now remember the new name? Huh. See, they changed from Silicon Graphics to SGI, capital letter, and they found that didn't work, so they changed it again to small letter SGI. <laughs> and, I, and, and you think I'm funny, look it up. The good, days about, good things about today's world is you could Google anything. <laughs> um, so, 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 so changing name is not a strategy, okay? In fact, nowadays I get a lot of meetings by saying we're BlackBerry, and then most people that granted the visit would say, well, let's see what these guys are up to. Isn't that more powerful than, you know, let's say I call myself ABC and say, oh, by the way, the CEO of ABC would like to talk to you about security. I don't think I'm gonna get too many meetings. They say, huh? You know, there's like 500 companies want to talk to me about security. And I'm okay with security, that's fine. You know, and, and, and so changing names, I thought through it, it's a bad deal. <laughs> so let, let, let's talk a bit about what, right. uh, what you are doing and where your strategy is going. Maybe start with uh, um, the, the world of EMM, of enterprise mobility management. Um, curious, you know, you're up against some heavyweights there, like IBM. Uh, this is how we got to manage our lives on our on our on our devices, uh, and you're in the background of that. When you go into those meetings, what do you say that you've got that those other vendors may not have? Um, we we are, from every review and um, uh, runoff or point, you know, POCs and proof of concept. Mm. Sorry, proof of concept. Uh, we are the most secure. Um, software, uh, or a technology that BlackBerry has, anywhere from cryptology to the way we manage uh, identity uh, inside, of, inside of the software stack, as well as as, um, as it related to hardware uh, root of trust, um, all those things and the features that we put in to allow operators and enterprise customers to manage what get, what get looked at, downloaded, and contained, um, we definitely are, you know, are, the, are the number one in the, in the world. So that's, that's the calling card. And this is why the strategy in the last few years has been very much focused on um, regulator industries, the people that has to prove to the regulators that you have done everything you possibly could do for, for, uh, for security. Um, and um, you know, so you know, our install base are the governments, obviously, the Canadian government and the United States government, armed forces, and you know, the German army, and mm -hmm. um, um, and more, all, ma all the major banks other than RBC. <laughs> oh, I am at RBC. Uh, uh, <laughs> You're I good. actually, That's I actually didn't even know why I, did, I agreed to come. Uh, but because uh, you like but David, because I love, I, I, well, a, I want to get back in here, yeah. uh, and and B, 
you know, I, I, I like David a lot. And um, so, uh, and he's a technologist. Mm -hmm. um, and so, anyway, so th that's what we do. And, and uh, that's what our calling card has been. And we're focusing now on healthcare. And we're quite big in transportation. I don't know if you know that. And this is kind of the interesting. Transportation um, is actually more and more political nowadays. You know, in Canada, of course, you had that whole incident with GM getting our some of the car manufacturer site here. Um, that doesn't mean GM won't be in Canada, but it's just that for the at least the metal bending part of it, it won't be here. Um, we do a lot of work with GM and Ford and um, in so uh, tell us about the opportunity there. When you say transportation, you're talking vehicles prim primarily, and as our vehicles are more and more their, uh, their uh, technology devices and therefore need to be secure, what's the, uh, what's the play there for BlackBerry? Oh, um, so um, we have um, an operating system. It's the only safety certified operating system under ISO. Uh, the operating system is called QNX. It's in Ottawa, mm -hmm. um, and we designed um, software component that goes into the cars, um, and used to, used to be infotainment systems. Now we are into you know, cockpit and you know hypervisor over the air technologies and um, ADOS, which is your lane fancy name for like your lane changing. When when you lane change, you got beeping and all that. Um, um, so, and we're protecting a car from a cyber perspective. Next generation, we're gonna install more artificial intelligence uh, technology in that. So, so there are a lot of things that we do with it. There are 120 million cars, by the way, um, uh, that actually uses the Canadian technology um, uh, today in the world. And in the world, there's only about 1.1 billion cars. So there's 120 million already using, uh, using technology from BlackBerry. And what's the revenue opportunity there? For, uh, for BlackBerry over the next five years? How do you monetize what QNX um, So we sell building? the component into the design through the tier one. The tier one are the people like the Bosch and the Aptive and Panasonic, Denso, LG, and so they are the integrators for the car OEMs, car manufacturer. Now more and more we're directly working with Ford. In the case that we're working with Ford and, and uh, Jaguar, um, Land Rover. Uh, so we're helping them to design the next generation car. So when they ship the car, we got the royalty, basically. And our job is to get them more and more, more of our technology into the car and many copies of it. So, and, and then the future is to monitor um, the, the security readiness of vehicle that got put on the road. So that's just a huge opportunity going forward. Now that's just a car. Mm -hmm. Then you have the whole idea, uh, the thing about the drones. Then you have the, you know, the planes, and, and we're working on truck uh, container and tractor for security reasons. Um, so so the, that transportation market is huge. Is, is your focus in the next couple of years going to be principally transportation, or do you see branching into other, other sectors? You've talked about healthcare, oil and gas. We'll be in, we'll be in um, we haven't done much in oil and gas yet. Um, so financials, today the biggest three, financial, government, and transportation. We're starting with healthcare with McKinsey Health and a number of pilots that's going on. Um, and that's principally, and then we do some work with legal firms. That's principally our market space. But tra transportation sounds like where the, uh, where the growth will be. Tell us a bit more about the drones. What, uh, wh how do you see BlackBerry fitting into to drones in the future? To, 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 to make sure you prevent uh, people um, breaching the drone um, software so it won't be overtaken and then do some you know undesired thing. How much of a risk is that? Or that our cars are going to be hacked and driven into ditches or whatever the How much of a risk of a drone? Yeah. Well, a, or know, drones or, or other vehicles? Uh, I, you know, it's well documented that um, FAA will be concerned about a drones run into a engine of a plane taking off. Well, we've seen the scares at Gatwick just over the last uh, few weeks. The, the scares at Gatwick Airport oh, Gatwick, in, yeah, in London. Gatwick, yeah. And they don't even know, they don't even know who, what, when, and so that's why they have to ground all the planes for a long period of time, actually. Yes, those incidents. 
You mentioned AI, uh, and you've got a big deal still. I don't think it's closed yet, but uh, you're, you, you've clearly stated your ambitions for AI. Give us a sense of how you think AI is going to redirect BlackBerry in the space that you're, you're in. Yeah, uh, so, so security is really about a cat and mouse game. Uh, and, and so uh, we need the predictive technology uh, that are continuously um, updated themselves. Um, and so, you know, AI is just another fancy name. It's a very fancy name uh, for, you know, predictive machine, machine predictive learning algorithm. That's basically it. Uh, um, so, so we know we need that technology because we're more interested about endpoints, not just devices, not just a laptop or, or a, a router. Uh, we, we wanted to be able to manage everything large and small and have them talk to each other in a very secure manner. And that's what our game plan is for the long term. And so um, having the ability to manage and, and predict the, um, the, 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 the evolution of what's in the endpoint, it's extremely important. So this is why we're making a big investment in AI. So this is uh, Silence, uh, the acquisition that's on, uh, on the table. You're also up against some very sophisticated players. Google and Apple probably have ambitions to do something similar, if not the same thing. How do you compete with them? What's your competitive advantage? You, just, you, need, to, you need to focus. Um, you need to focus on what you do best. As I said, we just back up again. You know, BlackBerry's been doing security uh, and connectivity, com call it communication. BlackBerry's been doing communication and security for 30 plus years. Starting with the, even before the pager, um, it's, it's something that you sit on a desk and you download things, you know, so forth. Um, kind of plug and load and, 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 and throw, low and gold, that thing, environment. And then you get, get into the pager and then you get into the cell phone. Um, so it's been the heritage of the company. Um, and behind the scene, to make those technology work securely, um, we have our NOX, which is as sophisticated as any of the, um, uh, you know, NOX that not as big, but as, as sophisticated as, as most of all the major telephone company Knox around the world. Uh, we have the Knox, we have all the T1 lines that connect to 600 operators around the world. Uh, so we have a network that is secure. Um, and, and then we have cryptology solutions like Certicom, uh, embedded solutions like QNX, you know, communication solutions like the, you know, secure voice, file sharing, and emergency software management system like Ad Hoc. So all these things are focus on hyper-connectivity and security. You know, how does everything talk to each other securely? Sometimes connected, sometimes disconnected. Where we have a lot of competition, they also have a different focus. A lot of them, like Google, if they focus on user interface. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them focus on managing data, you know, and, and um, monetizing that data to create trends. Um, so we don't do any of those stuff. We are, f we are straightly a transport for secure. We don't take a look at any of the data. We never used it. We don't care about it. We actually have an algorithm um, to discard it in a very short time. So but we don't actually have, we don't have your data, for example. Right. And you, and you want to keep that focus, as you say, just on the yes, pure, it will, pure play of we, uh, we don't have any plans whatsoever to use um, data from our customer, no. So security has become a pitch battle, uh, certainly between the US and China. I want to get to the China question, uh, not because of your, your, your background, but because it is a, an existential challenge to everyone in technology today. And I wanted to ask you how we should be thinking about what's going on. If you step back and look at this battle, uh, don't think it's a war yet, but it could be between the US and China with Huawei, mm -hmm. which you know well, in, uh, in the middle. What should we be thinking as we look at uh, how this is evolving? Well, um, so uh, I, I think, first off, trading, cross-border trading, um, is, one, is a cat that out of the bag that will never be put a bag in a bag, okay? Now, you, the, the pro-trader, uh, we'll give you all the statistics of how many people in the world that we lifted out of the uh, poverty class, okay, how they have benefited 
the global trade had benefit, um, the size of the pie, uh, the GDP size of the pie, which we enjoyed, um, with, along with everybody else in, in the world. It does enhance peace, um, and that, so I am, I am a trade proponent, uh, a free trade proponent. Um, so, therefore, whatever setback we have today, um, it might take a little while, but I don't mean a long while, I think a little while, um, and I'll get back to why I say that. Um, I am a, uh, I'm an optimist, uh, it will resolve uh, with some kind of a deal. These are all posturing for a deal. Then the question is, how good is the deal on either side? Um, I, I'm, there is actually no other way. Let me give you some example why there's no other way. Um, currently, both um, in the US-China trade dispute, both countries are hurting. On uh, the Chinese are probably hurting first because they are a bigger part of the supplier, um, and the Americans will hurt later, later, a little later. However, even with that, without that, if you look at the global supply chain, and I'll just stick with technology. We'll just stick with uh, cell phone, routers, PCs. Uh, there are very few goods that these two countries made and trade that does not rely on each other's supply logistics. Could we change that? Absolutely. We could definitely move everything, including sourcing materials to Vietnam, Thailand, Cambodia. First you have to deal with quality issues and you have to deal with the startup issues. And in, in addition to all that, I don't think the raw materials distribution around the world will allow that to do it in a very smooth manner. So therefore, I think there is no choice but countries will have to come back to the table and the question is what, what, what concessions, what deals could be hammered out? So you, you mentioned supply chain and that immediately brings to, to mind what's going on with 5G and Huawei is a big part of the supply chain. A lot of the networks here and say, look, we can't do this, at least competitively, um, at a price point that consumers want without that sort of competition in the, in the supply chain. How do you see that re resolving itself over the next, uh, it's probably gonna be a couple of years? Well, um, so uh, the thing that's hurt Huawei is they are not the only 5G supplier, the gear suppliers. Um, you know, in, in Canada, a big project has been rolled out with Ericsson, mm -hmm. all right? So, um, so there are, there are competitors around the world. Um, so, you know, how I, how I think it played out is initially Huawei will have a hard time selling 5G to the Western world, especially to the Five I countries. So the Five Eyes can live without Huawei right. and still roll out I, I 5G. Think that's, You're I, I think that. that's gonna have to be a reality for a while. The only possibility over time is just like what Microsoft did in China which is that they will have to open up their source and, and for examinations and, and there'll be a control upgrade uh, along the way. That will take a while, but that's, I, I see no other way for Huawei to get back in the game without doing so. And do you think the company and the authorities in China would be open to doing that? I, it's, it's not a matter of markets. If they could find markets much more robust and bigger than you know the Five I country, um, and some of the Western non Five I country, but aligned with the Five I strategy like Japan. Uh, if they could do that, then then they have a decision to make. They have a business business decision to make. You know very well the view in Washington about the security challenges that China poses. Are they that serious? I'm sorry. The the, the, the security challenges that China poses. Do we need to take them that seriously? Are they that much of a threat to our security? I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I obviously don't work with Huawei and I don't have um, you know, the visibility of their code or, or I don't have any visibility with what the government um, found or whatever their, their thesis is based on. I, 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 have, no, I have no idea. Um, it takes, it's gonna take a long time for Huawei to get back into the supply status. 
And how confident are you that this is going to be resolved in oh, the next I, couple of years? I, I, I'm, I'm confident it's going to, it's going to happen. Let me, let me take some questions from uh, Facebook here. We've got one about uh, Android software uh, from one of our Facebook uh, viewers. When BlackBerry started integrating Android software into its phone, what kind of reaction did you see from uh, your target market? Um, so it, it, it's a very interesting thing. So when, when BlackBerry got into trouble, um, I asked the people, so what's the number one issue? They said, you, you don't have software. I can't, I can't even call it Uber. Um, <laughs> and, and by the way, for the record, yes, you can. Use the Vaporee 10. You go, go, go to the browser and do an m.uber.com. You right there. Uh, but anyway, uh, but this is one of those marketing thing. You know, once you've fallen behind, you're, you're dealing with perception. They don't, they don't want to hear the answer, even if you have the right answer. But um, uh, so um, now the world is a little strange. Now we sell them an Android phone. They now say, well, I went on security now. Um, so we had security before. Um, so I, I, I say the, the uh, Android is mixed. Um, people love the BlackBerry um, feel, um, the interface. Um, you know, some of you love the keyboards. I don't know how many love your keyboards. So, um, and <laughs> great, thank you. Uh, and, and I do too. Um, I uh, it was it's, so. The the point the point is um, it's it's mixed, um, and you kind of win some audience and loses some audience. Right. Got another good question here from Facebook about silos in uh, in the company. Every company's got its uh, silos. Uh, but BlackBerry uh, was certainly well known for that. How did, how did you, if not break them down, erode them? Um, this person, oh, this is from a Facebook, Facebook interface. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm always imagining this person work for us. <laughs> uh, every company has silos. Uh, the only way to break, there are two, two ways to break the silos. Uh, one, one to break the silo is to have, you drive accountability uh, that are more measurable and, and forces, if you're smart in driving those, um, it forces them to have to work together and therefore eliminate some of the silos. Uh, but, but company does have silos. We have our own, obviously. And I could dare say, I don't know whether I would say this, um, somebody should meet me outside uh, if you work for RBC and you believe you have absolutely no silos, um, I, I don't think I need to wait for a very long time. Uh, uh, and so, but but that's that's too that's a that's a given. Uh, you know, too bad. You know, too big too too big of an issue is obviously bad for a company. You have to break down a silo, but you have to break down a silo in in, in why. It got to be based on results. When you break down a silo, you can't say, by the way, the two of you, please shake hand. Doesn't do anything. Through if you two have the same common goal, that he wins, you win, you win, he wins, I think that the silo will gradually break down. Um, another approach to do the silo is to um, move management around. You know, there's a good technique of rotating top management so that they come in and they said, okay, that's not why you think there's a silo. This is not why they reacted the way they reacted. It was because of this, and let me, let me so they, they have a better understanding of the pain point of each of the group. I don't think silo was created just because. Um, usually, uh, being, protect, you know, being protective of their environment, and if, if that's being addressed, um, it, it will break down. How often do you like to move your senior managers? I, I don't. I, I, prefer, I prefer to, um, to have accountable measurable goals. Now, part of the reason, um, on a serious note, part of the reason is I don't actually have the luxury to do that. If when, I, when the company does pretty well, um, then, then having management rotation is actually a very positive thing. Not only eliminating your silo, but expanding the horizon of individual that you create much more, t many more talents for the company. Um, I never had that luxury. Uh, we were in survival mode. I start moving everything. Um, new plans and new ideas start showing up, but we should never get to the, the survival point. So, so, so I, I normally just say, 
let's you and I work on the same thing and we got measured the same way. Um, and, and that's usually what I do. How do you motivate a senior team when you're dealing with survival? When you look back at 2013, 2014 at BlackBerry, how did, how did you motivate the team? I think being transparent, um, you explain exactly where you are. Um, one thing I hope my, you know, my troops will agree, they, they might or may not like what I said. Um, I think they do trust what I say. Mm. Um, and, and I think that's important, right? I mean, people could make their own choice. Um, you could get up and give them the marketing job and you could tell them what a great stuff and everything, you know, jump up and down on stage and stuff. It doesn't really work because people are all intelligent. They sit there, they know, they know what's going wrong and they, they, when they get back to work, they also see the challenges. Um, so by being very transparent and very upfront about, I understand the challenge. And sometimes I even told them, um, it's, it's, not time, it's not time for us to fix it yet. So you have to live in an imperfect world for a while. And people get it. Oh, the other thing is, it's very important to have fairness. Especially in my, you know, in, in an environment of, I, I think I would, I would suggest it's in any environment, but in a turnaround environment, it's very important to have fairness. A lot of people, is, uh, there's a lot of diehard BlackBerry employee will, will s sacrifice a lot being at BlackBerry and helping BlackBerry to get back to the old days, uh, being a great company. Um, and y y the, anything we do must, must make sure they feel that it's fair. If they don't feel it's fair, there goes, then, then things collapse. Good, um, another, anyway. Another Facebook question here. Sounds like this, this one also comes from uh, back home from your head office. Uh, talk to, it says, talk to us about your senior team. What kind of culture do you surround yourself with? Oh, well, I like to, I, I, I like to um, make sure that the, 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 the team is all, all believers. Okay? Um, I also like to make sure the team knows uh, that, um, oh, let me tell you what I interview. When I interview senior management, I tell them that, you know how bad we are, right? And then they say, yeah, 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 yeah. I said, okay. <laughs> I said, um, and I said, I mean, I'm, I'm really very, very honest about this. I told them that, think about how bad we are, and it's worse. <laughs> and they usually like, looked at me, and, and then they're interviewing, right? They're eager to have the job. They said, they usually say, that's okay. Uh, okay, fine, you know. I'm here to solve problems. I said, oh, no, 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 that's really bad. I'll tell you why, it, 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 it's very important that, that I need people that come in, look at the problems, and look at it as a challenge and a problem to solve. You have to have the right attitude to deal with the problem. No, we don't have all the resources in the world. Yes, there are Google and Microsoft and IBM and, and whoever I forgot. Uh, all, all breathing down our neck. Uh, no, we don't have the money they have. Uh, and, and, and no, you know, we don't have the, the, the ability to find the best talent. So other than that, everything will be great. Uh, you still need to deliver. Thank you. And if you don't deliver, then you have to leave. And they, you have to have that mindset. Um, I'll, I'll make something happen. It's the mindset. And I wrote uh, New Year's, uh, this year actually, New Year uh, thing. I, I, I started to advocate the whole concept of winning attitude. Winning attitude is not about how much resources I don't have, how big a turnover which I have, and, and you know, we, we should have invested in this. We should advertise more. We should have get the message out. Yes, all these things should have happened, but, but it's not. So it's up to us to make this thing still, you know, going some places. Yeah. And, and that's, that's the attitude I like to surround myself, the people with. And it's refreshing if you could get something done with very little. I, and I mean it. I, I mean, now that's my mm -hmm. kind of ammo, maybe, you know, that's my focus. That's what excites me. Um, I don't like to be a fair weather golfer. Um, you know, I actually think, oh, I, I play contract bridge. I don't have time to do it. I play contract bridge and comp uh, competition 
contract players are growing up. We love a bad hand. I don't know how people play bridge and contract bridge. A bad hand is where, you, let's say you have all the A's and kings and queens and all that, you get seven no trump, everybody gets seven no trump and make the contract. That's not how contract bridge score. Contract bridge score by everybody else make, let's say, six hearts, you make six no trump. Then you win. Okay, it, it, it's really about could you do better with what you got? Mm -hmm. and, and I like my management team, I like the entire company to feel that way. It's our time to win, could we make it happen? Right? Yes, that's all I got. I don't have what I used to have. And that's, that's a culture. Yeah, that's a, that, that's a great insight. Um, playing with a bad hand. Yeah, that, uh, playing with a bad hand. Shows a good manager. Everybody could play with a good hand, by the way. Yeah, you know, exactly. Um, good question here from WebEx about uh, dig digital cities. We've got Sidewalk Labs here in Toronto. Uh, yeah. What role do you see for BlackBerry in digital cities? What is our? What role do you see and what opportunity do you see for Well, BlackBerry so we recently digital released, digital I think it's about a month ago, um, we recently released the, uh, the, the security certificate management software um, for free for, for a smart city. So what does that mean? It means that, well, well, we facilitate, the reason why I put it out there because we want to facilitate auto, uh, autonomous driving cars and kind of level four cars, interact with traffic lights and trustingly interact with traffic lights, interact with each other, interact with infrastructures, network gear and so forth. So that, that's what we did it for. And that's the basis, block, basic block of smart city. So what our focus is to make sure that communication between different devices or different parties under a smart city is, it, it, it could be checked for, for you know, non-intruded um, you know, uh, code, so to speak, uh, or, or, or session infrastructure. That's what we do. Right. Interesting question here from uh, Facebook about uh, your view of FIs and banks. Uh, obviously, cyber attacks we could talk at length about, but I think they want you to talk about the world beyond cyber attacks. You're a great business leader, st strategic thinker. When you look at uh, financial institutions and banks, what do you think are we up against? What's our biggest strategic challenge? Well, um, cyber, cyber attack uh, comes in many forms. I think um, some, most people think about cyber attack starting with a simple thing like denial of services, bring your network down, uh, and, 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 and changing some data and all that, uh, that created a ransomware situation. Um, that's, that's the cyber attack. There's a level about that which could um, literally topple the, um, the, the financial integrity um, of institutions, uh, meaning that transaction happen is not supposed to happen. And, and, and then you now need to find a way to not only stop it, but, but reverse it. You folks in the bank business, you know, you deal with large numbers. Uh, you know, one tick is a huge sum. Um, and somebody is liable for that, that one tick, if it's not intended to have happened. Right? So, so it's, it, it, I worry about if we stop believe, if our society stop believing in, um, in our banks, uh, in the integrity of the transaction, I, I think the way of life, our way of life is completely changed. I, I think that is social chaos. So I think the cyber attack problem is, is much beyond than just you can't get into your account, you, your account's wrong, or it's way beyond that. How close are we to that risk? Um, if you listen to the government, um, they have task force um, that manage those or watches and manage those and all the time. And my understanding is, it's pretty scary, is um, it's more closer in than most people think. So when you, we, we've, we've talked about a lot of issues here today, but it all comes back to technology. And I'm, I'm curious when you step back and look at what technology is doing in the world today, are you more optimistic or more concerned? Well, it's, it's, it, I'm more optimistic, uh, it's unavoidable. Um, I mean, we, we are in, um, in an era that 
uh, everything goes digital, everything's go connected. Um, and, and so a bad node propagates. Um, it's not like in a lockdown state when you have a bad node, the bad, you, you just contain the bad node. So it propagates. So I think the, 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 the whole IoT and the cloud movement are all the right thing for efficiency, effectiveness, saving lives, you know, the whole, all the good things you said, you could check that. Um, I, I, I do believe that it brings in the enormous amount of challenge on, on keeping the integrity of the systems. But overall, you're more optimistic. I, I, I'm, yeah. You're techno-optimist. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we're definitely so much better off than 50 years ago, right. 30 years ago. Um, things um, not only happen quickly, but put, could propagate quickly. So same thing with good things, right? Good things could happen quickly. Um, medicine, uh, new drugs um, get developed and approved much faster in cycle than they used to be with, with the aid of technology. Right. So, that's a beneficial benefit to, 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 to human. We're almost out of time here, unfortunately. Uh, and in respect and honor of our guests, we always make a contribution to the charity of their, their choice. And John here has uh, selected the uh, Food Banks Canada. I wonder if you could say a few words about why you uh, pick food banks. Well, um, so we all have a responsibility to um, to, to, to take care of the more unfortunate people. Um, and I don't know of anything more fundamental than food. Um, and I'll, the other possibility, the other one is medicine. Um, so when you uh, or your team asks us about who we like to support, we as a company, and myself included, we support you know, Make-A-Wish Foundations, uh, we support Food Bank, more of an immediate, what we could see as an effect. Um, we also support uh, something called the Operation School Bell. Um, it's, a, it's kind of a very local, small organization. I thought that was very meaningful. It, it, it's, it's, it, it designed to um, keep the pride of children who are you know, less fortunate, meaning that every year we got an employee to take student, um, poor kid, poor student with a poor background, before the school start year, they go out and buy new stuff. You know, give them um, a, you know, a, a budget of let's say $200, and they, will, they could only buy things that are related to school like a backpack and, and, and so forth. And the reason is we realize that if we, got, we, we want to give them backpacks and they don't want to wear it in school um, because it, you know, everybody has the same backpack um, with that probably a big Blackberry logo on it. <laughs> um, and and they, 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 then, then they don't have the self-esteem um, with their classmate and so we do everything we can to protect the self-esteem of the individual. Um, and for people who haven't tried it, really should try it. It's extremely rewarding. And um, they, even parents will break down and cry. Right. And, and um, so I, I have parents came to my office and they thank me and, and they start crying and I don't know what to do. I just said, <laughs> <laughs> I'm usually not a person that don't know what to do, uh, you know, but it's like, I don't know if I say this or I say that, and anyway, um, so Make-A-Wish is another one. Uh, we're active in Make-A-Wish, and, uh, and I think Food Bank, especially when your team asked us it was during the holiday season, mm. I thought it would be a meaningful That's thing a to great, do. Uh, great message and great context for everything we've talked about uh, today. Before we go, I, I'd just like to remind the audience to mark your calendars for our next uh, disruptors. It's February 27th. We have Brian Scudamore, the founder of uh, 1-800-GOT-JUNK, to talk about reimagining the, uh, the customer journey and all the exciting things he's uh, doing and seeing on, uh, on, on that front. Thanks to the audience, both here in person, and most of all, thank you, John Chen, for, uh, for a great conversation. You can, uh, 
listen to this conversation. We'll post it on SoundCloud and uh, on some of your favorite apps as a uh, podcast. Follow us, hashtag RBC Disruptors, and uh, please stay in the conversation. John, thank you again, and you're always welcome back at RBC. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.